Well, I have 701, and as usual, we'll have a, a couple of, of people joining in um, uh, uh, as, the, as the minute or two uh, passes by. But why don't we just go ahead and get started? We have a, a full agenda tonight. We have a great presentation again. And uh, um, so, Father Dave, would you like to uh, lead us in opening prayer? Very much, Eric. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks, everyone. Uh, on the call tonight. This is our 16th in a series of uh, training events uh, provided by our partners in ministry from CCS, and we're delighted to uh, have you with us tonight. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for all the gifts you have given us, for our lives, our loved ones, all that we have and all that we are. Most of all, we thank you for Jesus, your Son and our Redeemer, who came among us to show us the way to eternal life. Jesus was the perfect steward of your gifts, showing that complete trust in you is necessary and that giving of self is a, a most important part of following him. May the offerings of our time, our talents, and our material resources be made in the same spirit of sacrifice that Jesus taught us by his life and death for us. We pray this prayer and all of our prayers in the name of the Christ. Amen. 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 I just want to say, I should have said this before, that prayer was written by Thomas Merton, who is a, a, was a, a monk uh, in, um, in Kentucky. And probably many of you have heard of Thomas Merton, but uh, I found it online and I thought I would share it tonight. Yeah, yeah I've heard it. Heard that name before? Yeah. Well, thank you, Father Dave. And sixteen of these. This is great, and uh, and I definitely recognize a few of you from the the earliest days. Uh, so thanks for for sticking with us and joining us on Tuesday nights or Wednesday mornings if you happen to be crossing over between our two sessions. Uh, so tonight, what we'd like to do is uh, we'll just touch briefly on on the the calendar as as uh, uh, things are progressing and talking about the uh, the immediacy of, of what should be happening now. Ideally, uh, if your programs are kicking off this weekend or if they, they did kick off this past weekend, um, and uh, and then we have a uh, another parish to spotlight tonight. So we've we've asked St. Augustine's in Asbury Park to share their plans and and how things are going to be uh, uh, progressing in in their uh, annual per, uh, campaign. And uh, and then we 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 figured we'd uh, circle back to the virtual uh, component because it's something that we're we're hearing a lot of uh, in, in our calls, and uh, so as, as we're having these interview these individual meetings with with uh, parishes, where uh, that's it's one of the bigger questions we get is how are we going to do this uh, when when half of our congregation is not going to be there in the pews with us? Uh, so we'll talk about the digital commitment forums. And uh, and then we started to talk about uh, virtual events last week, but because our uh, we were having such great conversation, we didn't get to the full presentation. So we'll continue that uh, the the and talk about the planning steps for virtual events just briefly, um, and then hopefully we'll have some time to, to hear from you and your breakout in the breakout sessions today. So. Um, so just uh, just a reminder, we've been we've talked about the, defining the goals, the planning, and in the past uh, two two of these sessions, we've been focusing on delivering the plan. Um, and so, what we should be really thinking about over these next four weeks is, uh, of course, this weekend we're hoping everybody, uh, every parish will will dedicate the sermon to preaching about stewardship, and and uh, this would be Stewardship Sunday for for all congregations in the diocese, whether you're in the middle of your program, uh, just kicking it off, or perhaps you've already finished it, uh, please uh, you know, focus this weekend on, on the, the homily this weekend on, on stewardship. Uh, <clears throat> mailing and emailing your request letters. So by now your announcement letters have already gone out. And now it's the time to start, start thinking about that next mailing of a commitment form, uh, making those testimonials happen. Uh, so uh, recruiting folks to give them in person and virtually uh, pre-recorded or live, uh, but, uh, but really lining those up and giving them the speaking points and guidance on, on uh, how and when this should be taking place, ideally starting on the, the 25th. Um, 
And uh, if you're if you have it as part of your plan to make reminder phone calls to to then uh, get that process started so that they can begin their call shortly after the letter arrives in everybody's houses. Um, and uh, and then continuing to make the regular pulpit announcements, bulletin announcements leading up towards the, the commitment Sunday uh, exercise. So uh, we will talk also today about that commitment Sunday and what and some keys to success, especially as we think about that in a virtual world. But uh, um, I'd like to, before we, we get into um, that part of the program. Uh, loved it to hear from St. Augustine's. We have uh, quite a few uh, members of the committee on the call today, and and so we'll we'll uh, recognize Shirley. But Shirley, uh, uh, perhaps you can share uh, who who all's uh, been able to join on today, and okay. uh, thank you for being here. <laughs> Oh, thank you. And, and first of all, thank you for uh, inviting us uh, to join, um, join with you tonight. Uh, we're, we're certainly very honored and very pleased to share with you uh, a little bit more about uh, St. Augustine's uh, Episcopal Church. Um, we should have on the call Father William, uh, our priest, uh, Carol Ann Nicholas, our senior warden. Uh, we should have Annette Buchanan, our everything, um, uh, and certainly uh, been just a member of the vestry and, and just so helpful on everything. Um, my husband, uh, Kevin Thompson, many, many of you know him. Uh, he's a member of uh, the uh, stewardship committee. He's a, he's a limb. He's a bunch of things, too. Um, uh, and uh, uh, presently in the in the path for becoming a deacon. So I just want to say that, throw that in there. Um, and I think there's a couple of other people on the call. I, I didn't expand my screen. So if Diane Ren Farris is there. Um, I'm, I am. Good evening, yes. everybody. Yes, she was going to join in tonight. Um, so that's kind of, unless I forgot somebody, um, I brought all these people with me. Uh, <laughs> Each one of them, and certainly will add and will share a little bit more about our story here at uh, St. Augustine's. So, um, St. Augustine's, you know, is over a hundred years old. Uh, many of the many of our members, uh, their families have been a part of St. Augustine's for for many many years, second and probably third generation uh, family members. And I think one of them is Carol Ann Nicholas, who's been a member forever. And That's since true. Her, from what I understand. So That is true. But I, let me also interject. My great-grandfather was the first senior warden. So, so all, and that's significant, because all of that plays into stewardship and where we are today. Those families contributed so much to our church and to our history. And again, their current family members, members of our church, continue to provide all the, the time and talent and treasures that I think we need to go forward. So, you know, that's a plug for our church and our, and our tremendous family uh, that we've had. Um, there, there are members uh, of the Stewardship Committee now who've been members of Stewardship for many, many years. Um, their family members, some of them, their family members uh, were certainly very involved uh, with stewardship. So that again plays into who we are and certainly our story regarding stewardship. Um, so this, and what I'll do is I'll let them say a little bit more, but I just wanted to share that with you because that's part of our history and our, and our plan for going forward. So that's our, that leads us to where we are now that rich history that St. Augustine's has had over many, many years. So Father, are you there? Father William? Okay. So the, I just wanna go ahead and start and I'll, and I'll allow and certainly add, hopefully add um, some more to this context regarding um, St. Augustine's with other members um, sharing our story. Um, so what we did over the past year, uh, and, and let me just start back by saying that over the past few years, we've really tried to 
look at our stewardship program and try to continue to add to that effort and to that experience. So uh, uh, Claire Gregory came out with and spent some time with us a few years ago and really worked with us uh, in terms of, of the program that we were offering to our members at that time. Uh, we've had um, uh, 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 Constance uh, White come out and, and talk to us about uh, talents. Uh, and, and we've had a very active program uh, sharing with our members uh, uh, and helping them to explore their talents. Again, fitting into to where we are today. And from the, you know, we, even last year, we had a very lovely program with, with uh, discovering our talents and that was led by Kevin Thompson. So we continue to look and search so that everyone uh, is a part of what we do as, and considers themselves a, a, a steward uh, of our church. So I'm gonna pause right there and just uh, maybe ask uh, Carol Ann to add to this conversation. Uh, thank you, Shirley, happy to do that. As I mentioned earlier and in interjecting myself, um, my great grandfather was the first senior warden, his brother-in-law was the first junior warden and members of the, his brothers were members of the first vestry which started our church, uh, November 1, 130 years ago. So I am totally vested and invested in St. Augustine's because I was raised in this church. I was a baby, basically almost born in this church. And my family, as well as other families in our church, used their time and their talents to build the first building, build the first pews, build the first altar. Um, they provided all kinds of tangible gifts in addition to um, their, you know, time. Um, I am drawn to this church because of the way that I was raised in this church community. Uh, everybody knew Everybody everybody was either aunt this or uncle that, whether they were blood or not. And they fostered a family um, type of environment. And as a result of that, um, many of us, even though we're not all here in Asbury Park, feel connected whether they are in Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, Ohio, and a few other states that I, you know, fail to uh, mention. So there is a an emotional attachment to the church itself. This is the sec third building, I think, because the first one was rehabbed, and now this one that we're in currently was built and, and celebrated, I believe, in 1970. But it doesn't matter. It's really not the building. It's the people who are inside that are our church. That's why even though we're not in the building now, we are still being churched and we feel connected because of the availability of Zoom, even though I kid about being Zoomed to, you know, to the nth degree. But without this, we would not be connected. And that's from my perspective, the important part, connecting with people who've grown up in the church, people who have come to join the church, and people who come to visit the church. And we are being led, if you will, by a wonderful, wonderful gift in Father William. We also, I believe, are... are um, um, what can I say, gifted by people like the Stewardship Committee. And we have other people in the church who volunteer their time. This church would be nothing without our members volunteering their time. And I've often said if they didn't volunteer our time, it wouldn't matter how much money we put in the plate right. because nothing would be happening. And it is through their efforts, their stewardship, their commitment, 
that we are still a church 130 years later. Thank you, uh, Carolyn. Uh, F, uh, Annette, can you just share with us uh, a few insights into stewardship at our church? Okay. Um, as uh, most people who know me know, I'm less emotional, uh, more strategic and clinical, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. So, uh -huh. so we, we sort of get to the bottom line. So. Um, <laughs> One of the reasons why we were so interested in getting uh, CCS uh, become a part of our program is that uh, we've had um, wonderful programs over the years. And as Shirley mentioned, there's so many stewardship uh, initiatives that the diocese has launched. And so what was exciting to me about um, the partnership with CCS is that it was an opportunity to have a one-on-one -on -one with some consultants to help us to continue the trajectory of increasing uh, pledges year over year, because we had sort of plateaued at one point, we were seeing some decrease following, you know, the trends that we were seeing across the church, whereby, you know, our, our members were getting older, you know, um, big givers were not, you know, were, were passing away. So what, what could we do to continue that trend? So as Shirley mentioned, we have a mul a multiple multiple approach. So obviously we want to focus on treasure because that's always critical. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think the, you know, the tripod approach that we've all been looking at, not just uh, treasure, but time and talent has worked well for us. Because even though the congregation has gotten smaller, um, we find that we, we are able to, um, you know, meet our needs. So, um, so what we've put together with the help of CCS and the stewardship committee is a program that I think will change the trajectory in terms of you know the pledges that we're getting, and also um, you know be exciting to our our congregation to kind of rediscover rediscover the gifts that we have, you know, including our you know wonderful outreach program and our you know our youth ministry, et cetera, so that we can tell our story and have that not be a story just for us individually to ponder but for the whole diocese to be aware of and have us, you know, be an, an example of, you know, a church in an urban community that can not only serve our own needs, but the, but the needs of the larger community. Yes, exactly. Um, I think Diane, Diane Ren Farris. Yes. Very instrumental yes. and so much help with stewardship. Diane? Yes, hello. <laughs> it's exciting to be together like this, it really is. And, um, I get goosebumps when I start thinking about how many individuals we have touched within our community. Um, one of our primary objectives is to feed those who are in need of food, either by having our pantry, which has been established and available for many years now, by providing uh, grocery bags for individuals who are in need and have a place where they can prepare their food, and also for those who are not necessarily in that position, but are in need of meals. And on Sundays, that is what we do. We provide meals. Uh, normally, outside of this coronavirus nature that we're in right now, we started out well, over 30 years ago, actually, with um, soup and salad. And it was exciting because, to be honest with you, it was just a couple of years after my husband and I were married, and we wanted to do something in honor of our anniversary for our church. So uh, we had this thought, and several others joined us, and that's how we began. And as time went forth, we were able to get support from outside of the church as well, donations, and we were able to grow from soup and salad to hot meals. And um, so that's what we were doing. And then when COVID came, we were able to adapt again to still provide bag lunches for individuals on Sundays to come. And uh, so therefore food was made available for them. They would come, keep social distancing, a mask were available for them if they didn't have it. And um, there have been different leadership in the role of maintaining this fantastic community outreach. And um, I have to mention, uh, Linda Chameau, 
and that a whole a whole team was fabulous. Uh, but uh, as far as handling the books and getting grants, we've been gifted, and so therefore over 30 years now, this particular mission uh, and reach out outreach to the community has been continuing. It has not stopped. We've had different people who have come in to volunteer. Uh, I met a wonderful individual who wanted to give something to our church. And on Thanksgiving, he and his family would come, and together we would give a wonderful Thanksgiving meal for all those who needed it. So that's one of the things that that we have done through mm -hmm. uh, stewardship and, and outreach uh, by feeding, but also with uh, the need of toiletries and right. hats and gloves and things that are needed in the community. These are a part of uh, the things that we do. So we're very socially mm -hmm. conscious. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer to best of my ability. Kevin, Kevin Thompson, and then uh, Father, if we could, if we could get him, and then we'll just wrap up, and then we'll share with you uh, certainly a little bit about our timeline. Kevin. Yeah. So, what you've been listening to is the story of our church and CCS provided us basically the opportunity to tell that story. So, you know, you've heard this story and, and you've heard it from everyone else, but you, our parishioners really never had the story told. And so what happened is my wife gave me an outline and I basically worked from that and, and filled in, you know, what is, what is our story? You know, and, and everything that you've heard, you know, from Carol Ann to, to um, Annette, to Diane, was shared in, in this brochure. I don't know if uh, Eric has a copy of the brochure that, 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 that was made, but um, we provided, the, oh, there we go. There we go. So uh, we provided the words and, and the pictures and CCS made it beautiful. You know, more, more beautiful than I, ever, than I ever really imagined. I, when I got it, I just kept telling Shirley, wow, wow, wow. So, you know, we're, we're really excited about it. We're, we're very proud, proud of it. Um, also, uh, D um, Diane Valens, who is our treasurer, was very instrumental in this process as well. And so it's been a team effort. And I think that looking at it, you really see the, uh, the love that our church has, the, the uh, diversity that our church has, and also can learn more about our church and the reason why we want you to uh, be part and to and to give, and 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 you can actually see and understand not only where your money has gone in the past, but what challenges we have ahead of us and where we and where we plan to go in the future with God's help and 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 your commitment. Um. Is Father there, Kevin? Can you see him? He has been on, we just haven't heard him. Okay. Well, uh, again, um, I think um, um, we'll give Father a chance when he um, uh, when he picks up. But but Kevin really crystallized uh, in some in, in summary form the fact that what we were able to do is to is to put our put our story on uh, certainly on paper. And CCS guided us and, and helped us to um, certainly um, focus in on certain parts of it, uh, tell a little bit more about certain parts of what we were doing. And it was there. And, and it really truly is. If, if we could probably write several more <laughs> pages, a whole other document, we'd be more than willing to do that. Because once you start to look at what you've done, it, it it continues to grow and there's a lot more to tell and share about St. Augustine. So it, it's very encouraging to me. And I know that uh, when our congregational members re receive this brochure, which is in the mail, um, okay. um, they will, they'll say, Oh yeah, I remember that. Oh yeah, we did this. We did that. You know, why didn't you say something about X? Because those are our members. They say, why didn't you say that? <laughs> um, but it, it really is a good story. And it, and it truly is who we've been for many, many years. This is not something new, but we're able to, to codify it 
uh, in this particular document. And I'm excited. We, you know, I'm saying I'm already thinking about next year's uh, 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 information that we, we want to begin to share. So we took the six week plan. Uh, it, it's really, really short for us, but um, due to COVID, um, we, we, got, we got started late this year. Uh, normally, uh, what we try to do during the year is to have at least a one or two events uh, for stewardship during the year. Uh, we weren't able to do that this year. So we were very aggressive uh, with our timeline. And again, CCS was very helpful in really um, examining that timeline and, and giving suggestions along the way. Our stewardship program really begins um, at the beginning of October. Um, we, start, we start out with uh, either an activity or certainly sharing uh, with our congregation through our bulletin or on our website or through our robocalls. We, we share with them what's coming. So we started in uh, the stewardship committee met during the month of September. Again, CCS was uh, involved with some of those meetings um, um, and we shared with them exactly what we were planning ahead. So that October 1st, we, we stuck to the timeline and, and um, um, really started, we got our letter out uh, from father um, and that went out in the mail. And then we, we plan to plan for our brochure and our pledge form to go out. And again, that's in the mail now uh, that the, the, uh, the pledge form will be shared in our bulletin. Uh, it'll be emailed out um, as well. And here's this document again, very bare. Uh, there's so many activities here or, or places where one can contribute their time. And we certainly want to share that. We, all, we also wanted to encourage through our uh, giving uh, plan, the little, the stair steps there and encourage everyone. Can you, uh, and show them not only where we are, but encourage them to take another step up. Um, and, we, and, we, and in the past, we did that right at the pulpit. Uh, we, would, we would stand up and we would talk about this. Uh, again, very, very transparent uh, because you have to be that way. Uh, and, uh, and encouraging everyone to share, but it's right here now on our pledge form and that's so great. Um, so I'm, I'm happy about that. And, and, and again, Diane um, Belenz was very helpful and getting this information quickly and getting it out there so that we could share it with our members. And again, anyone has questions, you know, we're there. We open the books here. What do you want to know? Uh, this is what we have. This is what we need. Here are, our, you know, here are the needs of the church. But most importantly, think about all the time and talent and treasure that you can, that you can give. And I think this form exactly says that. Excuse me, Shirley. So, Eric, if you could just go back one slide. I just wanted to make a comment of, of, about the pictures that we had. So, uh, if you look at the pictures, you know, for, of course, the first picture is, is the front view of our church. But the next picture is, is our feeding program, uh, which we do every Sunday. The uh, picture at the, at, on the right-hand side, the lower bottom, was our Uganda day. And that's uh, father's wife and, and one of his daughters. And the uh, other picture in the green is is our uh, stewardship uh, our stewardship day. I think last year, if, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, there's another picture. And you know, so it the the idea behind the pictures it, it was to give people, if you've never been to our church, an idea of who we are, what we do, and how we touch the community, and and why we want you to come. Thank you, Eric. One of the things that, that we do, which um, we hadn't had a chance to get started this year, but we've, we've resurrected it. And it's, it is a little bit like a testimonial in a sense, but we do parishioners of the month. And, and that is their testimony. That is what they've given. And that, that's a spotlight on them. And um, this is something we've resurrected uh, again, and we'll have our first parishioner of the month, uh, uh, that we're going to uh, honor, if you will, uh, this coming Sunday and, and going forward from here. But as father would say, if he was there somewhere, 
he would say what a what a wonderful wonderful um, way to to recognize uh, our members and to hear them most of the time they won't say anything because they they just are so surprised and and so happy that they're being honored but they're being honored for what they do what they do for our church and it's really special so i just wanted to share that as well so we will have our parishioner of the month being recognized um, this coming Sunday. And Shirley, I just wanted to um, uh, let you know, Annette had just posted in the chat space uh, that Father William, um, is he's sending his greetings to everybody. Apparently, he's also at the Board of Missions meeting tonight. <laughs> oh, boy. So he's actually unable to join us, although I have seen him pop in and out, you know, okay. so I, okay. I know he's been, you know, kind of paying attention. All over the place. Right, but um, she says he wanted all to know that stewardship that the stewardship committee and the congregation um, have been very committed, especially during COVID, and the pledges have stayed consistent or have have grown. And he's proud of all the stewardship initiatives uh, throughout the year. Very nice, nicely said, Father. <laughs> and then Henry Richards was asking, how many parishioners? Uh, does St. Augustine's have, and what's your average Sunday attendance, if he may ask, roughly? Carol Ann? I thought you might ask me that question. We have <laughs> about somewhere about 76 to 100 people. Average attendance in good times is about 40 people. So. Awesome. But, but if but if I but, if I could just add to that, Carolyn. No, what, no. What? Let me let me add to that. <laughs> and if I'm not adding what you think, you add to what I'm thinking. The number of people that have shown up if, on our services for Zoom has been anywhere from forty-five to fifty-five people a Sunday. Hmm. Go ahead, Kev. Hmm. But the, the the advantage of being in a Zoom environment is that we've been able to reconnect with people uh, who were members of our church who have left and gone other places. So like Caroline was talking about Ohio and, 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 and Virgin Islands and uh, Uganda. We have people that visit from Uganda. We have people from Father's Old Church in, in Mississippi that's, that's attending service with us now. Right. People all over the country. So it, what, it, what it really has done it's really expanded our reach in terms of our commitment uh, to, to developing a, a worship community. And it, it opened up the door. So we're not just bound by the physical church, but now we're touching, we're touching people who were once members who love the church so much that they want to come back and attend as members in Zoom. And we've decided that we'll continue to do Zoom even after we actually go back into the church. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Kevin. And Henry Richards responded. He said, wow, your parish is a real dynamo, and I couldn't agree more. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all so much for, uh, for sharing today. I and mean, this has been absolutely terrific. We, we, we really appreciate you, uh, you know, giving us a, a, a look into how you're going to be doing your stewardship campaign and, and certainly learning a lot about the congregation. Anything else before we, uh, we move on to, to the second part of our, yes. of our presentation? Yes, this is Shirley. Okay. Again, um, um, not, you know, our, our, our uh, commitment Sunday is October 25th, but certainly we will be following up with phone calls um, uh, following uh, October 25th to ensure that we receive 100%, that's our goal, our objective <laughs> uh, to receive 100% of our um, pledge forms. So we'll be making phone calls. We'll we'll uh, we'll go we'll go by your house and pick up the form if, if necessary. Um, um, so we're 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 uh, in terms of of getting that good return. We're really looking to do that. And thank you, CCS, for helping us with certainly with our script. Uh, and our ability to uh, to don't forget to do some special things which you've added to our program and I really thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, thanks. We look forward to uh, to, to sharing how, how uh, things go. Uh, so uh, look forward to hearing and sharing. <laughs> so, all right. 
So, um, well, we're going to transition to uh, the discussion about Commitment Sunday and uh, and plans for the the Commitment Weekend uh, in gathering or or how and and so we'd love to hear once again. Please share when what you're what you're by by answering this poll and um, you know, realize there's a bunch of you from St. Augustine's on it. So uh, and that might skew us all <laughs> on the, if you all answer the same day, but that's okay. Uh, okay. So uh, pick a day, and then if you have anything special planned, uh, please tell us in the chat. And if you're um, going to be doing those, uh, anything virtual um, as part of your Commitment Sunday, we'd love to hear from it. But for the poll, just put yes or no, or if you're not sure. And, uh, and then we'll move on to our Commitment Sunday options. So. Um, So, uh, so while while everybody is uh, logging their responses, uh, we what we wanted to do today is to to just talk through some of these uh, these ideas for what can we do. Obviously, we have this beautiful commitment form that Saint Saint Augustine's just created. Um, uh, how can we then turn that into something digital so that those people who are participating online can also fill something out very easily? Um, not only responding to the request by making their commitment, but then perhaps on, on the, uh, the commitment Sunday, filling something out. So why don't we go ahead and end the poll here, and then we'll, um, we'll share the, the results just so we see where everybody else. So it looks like um, it's a good mixture of where everybody falls in their schedule. Uh, seems like the end of October. Um, and uh, it, it seemed, has the, the most votes, uh, but, uh, but a, a good mixture that we're heading into uh, to, to, to uh, Thanksgiving time leading up with our Commitment Sundays. And, um, and then we have uh, several of you who are planning special idea, having a, a different thoughts about how you're going to be doing your, uh, your commitment process. And uh, so that's, that's great to see. We look forward to hearing how uh, from you, please put it in the chat if you can. Um, and uh, uh, what, uh, what if anything you're going to be doing virtually. So thank you for sharing. So we'll, we'll continue on and, and uh, we look forward to seeing the, the chats pop up. So, uh, so as we think about digital commitment forms, these are just some really simple ways that we can transition a commitment form that you already have in place into something that can be used virtually. Uh, probably the easiest of all of these is to, uh, most, most everybody has access to Chrome and Google uh, documents. And uh, within one of those, uh, those uh, apps that Google offers is a Google form. So it's much like a survey. Um, but what you're doing is you're basically creating a micro web page that allows people to fill out a form. Um, uh, then similarly, you, you could send a survey, so like using SurveyMonkey and do something along those lines. Um, a little bit more involved, you could then, you could use your Banco program or whichever online giving program you have and, uh, and create a, a landing page or some sort of a, a, a page specifically for your stewardship campaign. Uh, much more involved would be creating a form, uh, PDF form uh, of your own, um, and then sending that out to people, or and or putting the putting it up on their website. And uh, the sim similarly, creating a web page form, uh, there's it's more involved. I say that because it's not it's just not something that people do all the time. Uh, do their own uh, website programming, but perhaps for some of you on the call, it's it, it's it's a it's a much more simple process. Uh, so we'll go through each of these uh, just to give you a sense for um, what, uh, how, how you can create one and how you can take advantage of it. But just some of the basics for creating a digital commitment form. Um, on the next page, we have uh, you know, some of the, the, the tips to, to make it successful is keep it simple, don't over, don't over complicate it. Uh, leave the credit card information out of there just for security purposes. We can follow up later to get the credit card. Uh, but unless you're using Vanco or whatever online giving program you have to collect the pledge, um, we would suggest just uh, uh, not, not bothering with the, the security implications of this because you want it to just be a very simple uh, uh, contact information and uh, pledge amount. 
um, and uh, and the frequency how they're going to do it, but also to to get their answer uh, because uh, if you have an opportunity to to get them to to uh, participate on that commitment Sunday day, they can uh, they can say at that time I've already turned it in um, and uh, and thank you very much. But everybody who's who's actually uh, tuning in that day would fill something out, or they can say I need more time. Uh, I'm not going to be able to participate at this time, or or yes, here's my commitment. Mm. So, um, so what we have uh, is, uh, so I'll start with Google Forms, very simple. Uh, of course, you'll need a Google account, but I think by, the, by this point, everybody either has a, a Gmail account or can easily create one. Um, they have templates for you to choose from. You, you know, it looks like a web page uh, that somebody clicks on a link and it, it props up to a, 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 a form that's on there. On, it could be a Google or, uh, or on, on their Internet Explorer or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the donor would fill out the forms and, uh, and then click submit. And then that, that form is returned to you and you have that information. Um, so very simply how you could do it is you go into your Google Drive, choose from your various apps that, that Google offers. Um, and uh, so Google Docs, Google Sheets, things like that. But Google Forms is right there. And once in there, you can see that they have these templates for you to choose from to, uh, to, to help you both, both with uh, the visual part of it. So on the next slide, we have a couple, we have some examples of, um, and, and very small, apparently, sorry about that. Um, but uh, um, so they have some, some templates that are already ready for you to, to create. And then what you can do is just to start populating this. And uh, um, it, with, the, with each question you have, uh, the option of, is this a multiple choice question? Is it a yes, no? Is it a blank field for you to fill in? And you can just put in some of the most basic information. Um, uh, on the next page is an example of, of how you might start off the pledge form uh, by having people check one of the following responses. So you can imagine how if you're, if you're having your, your in-gathering, people are participating online and, they, and you say at this point, and, oh, uh, we're asking each of you to please click, click on this link. It brings up this page and they can say, okay, well, I'm going to fill out one of these options um, and, uh, and then complete the rest of the form uh, as appropriate. But um, some of them, you know, that'll have the required information for giving the name, your name and, and en enough information. So you know who's responding. Um, so that's one option. Um, the the PDF form uh, is another another one that we wanted to highlight uh, for those of you who are familiar with uh, with Adobe uh, Adobe Acrobat uh, and you have uh, a professional version or or something a little bit more than just the reader uh, you, then you'll you'll know that they have a bunch of these tools that you can edit you can you can uh, uh, sign documents in your PDF things like that uh, but one of them is you can turn a any, any real document, you could turn your Word document into a pledge form. Um, so, uh, um, so what you would do is you'd go into your, uh, your edit, your tools, you'd, uh, you'd click on prepare form, and then you can, uh, what it will do is from a document that you've already selected, it'll identify a bunch of those fields for you, which is really neat. Um, and, uh, and so you have a little bit of cleanup to do, but Adobe is really smart in how this, it does this. And then the donor would then receive the form, fill out the same fields and then click submit. And then it emails back to you. So once again, super simple on their side of things. Uh, but for you, um, it's, there's a little bit more, uh, heavy lifting involved, but the nice thing is you get your own personalized document. It's not, not one of the templates that, that you're forced to use from, from Google. Um, so the next few slides have some examples just of how, so like I, uh, we took one of the, the old tens commitment forms, um, and just, uh, loaded it into, uh, to Adobe, uh, clicked on, sub, uh, create form. And you can see on the right side, what it did is it automatically populated each of those spaces and with what it guessed was the field. So for name, it said, well, that's easy. That's name, address, uh, the like, um, and then we just put little little radio buttons for them to choose weekly, monthly, so however. And then on the next page, you can see how once you're ready, you just say, okay, I'm ready to distribute the form. Tell it that you want to send it out via your own email. Um, and then you do that. And then what the donor receives is on the next page, something like this. They click on the PDF. They open it up. looks like anything that they can fill out. They fill out their own, their own information. 
And then at the top right, you see there's a little button for them to submit the form. Very easy for them to do that. Um, and, uh, and it all just comes right back to you. Um, hmm. Yeah, that's easy. So well, then, uh, easy. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that uh, easier said than done, right? <laughs> but it's, it's uh, just, just to, to show the various options that exist. Um, really nice. And uh, the, uh, the other one that we wanted to, to feature um, is, you know, we, we, we've all done surveys. We've all sent stuff out. It doesn't have to be SurveyMonkey. It could be any, any one of the, the, the many survey programs that are out there. But um, you, you know, from just the, the basic free account, you can do something very similar to what Google does. Uh, the difference, um, you know, really is, is uh, that SurveyMonkey is, is, uh, has, has many more uh, fields for you to choose from. They have 2,400 various types of, uh, of fields and questions already pre-populated. Uh, probably doesn't do you a whole lot of good because we know exactly the questions we want to ask. Um, but the same thing holds that you, you know, you can create a template or start use a template or create something from scratch um, and build your own uh, survey that asks the same questions that are on your commitment form. So you name your form, um, you tell it what you want to do uh, as far as, uh, you know, one, one question at a time, or if you want to do a, uh, um, put them all on one page and then you just start to populate it with your, with your own name and address, uh, other kinds of forms that, uh, questions that you can think of. And Eric, then, and if I could, if I could interrupt you for a minute. Yep. Uh, in any of these, can you have once that, let's say like the person completes it, can you have it send, have it send, have them send it to you? And they get a copy too, so that way they'd have that for the year and be able to use that as a as a point of reference. That's a great question. Um, yeah, I, I would imagine. Well, when when you have the PDF version, you have it. Uh, the donor uh, has it saved on their own computer, so it's theirs. Uh, and then, so they by just by default, they get I, they have that copy. Um, but. Uh, but that, I would imagine that it's just as just as, as easy for the person who's receiving at the treasurer or anything to then uh, thank you so much. Here's your here's your copy for yourself for your records. That's a great question. Yeah, I think in SurveyMonkey you would have that ability. I think somewhere there's some kind of setting. I don't know exactly where, um, but I've used these survey platforms before where sometimes you can have that setting where they send a you can send a copy to yourself or something or the person who creates the survey can have a setting and they're like send a copy to recipient or participant okay yeah. that's good, good so, yeah it's a great way to, to to have it for their own records that way there's no question <laughs> when completed the responding mm. so. save as a pdf okay. henry make henry makes a good comment mm -hmm. yeah yeah so uh, yeah, especially if you're getting a bunch of comment, a bunch of responses, uh, then Henry pointed out that SurveyMonkey does some analysis for you, um, mm -hmm. and let you know what your response rates are and things like that. And when you're ready to to send out your survey, you can choose how you want to do it. So it doesn't have to come from their um, email program. You could you could just share a link with everybody. Um, but the nice thing is you can also post it on Facebook and, and share it uh, however else. So you have a, a variety of ones. Uh, don't worry about buying responses from SurveyMonkey. That's not going to help you on a, <laughs> on a congregation uh, annual campaign. <laughs> so, uh, and then we have, a, you know, the, the online giving uh, and uh, the website forums, uh, you know, they're, they, if you have something on your website, like here's Grace Church in Haddonfield has something that uh, just very simple, uh, click out your stewardship pledge, uh, how, you're, how you intend to do it. Um, and, uh, and then you, if you, as you scroll down, it, it captures your, your uh, information on the, um, so, and that's just right on the, right on the, uh, the giving part, the stewardship part of the website. Um, this this one on the right is an example from Vanco, uh, where uh, you you click on presumably you you click on the stewardship page for um, for the parish, and then you click uh, make my pledge online, and then it takes you to the Vanco web page, mm -hmm. uh, and then from there you can create your your uh, your pledge and then fill it out with the much more confidential information. That way it takes it out of your hands and you can, you can, they can give the credit card information and set up their pledge that way. Um, 
so, so I mean, those are, those are the, you know, the, the five options are all kind of varying degrees of involved. Um, but uh, what we would suggest is <clears throat> using the pledge form digitally for those who need it, of course, if you want to email it to them, uh, definitely do that. But you, to use it on Commitment Sunday um, and to have everybody complete a form. So the, for those, those who, are, uh, who are able to join you in person, if you are there in person, great, uh, hand, hand out the form to them or how, however they would normally do it. Perhaps they're all prepared and they brought their own forms and they don't need to. Uh, and, but for everybody else who didn't bring their forms, you, you give them something to fill out. Uh, you ask them to, uh, to, to give uh, to, you know, to, um, complete the information, of, or at least the response. Yes, I'm able to give or no, I'm not, uh, amen if they've already, uh, made their pledge. Uh, but, uh, but then to, uh, fill it out and, and make the whole process very brief. So the, the, the preaching has already taken place, uh, that the testimonials have already taken place. This isn't necessarily the time to make the so-called pitch. So it should be a brief process. Um, and then what you can do with those people who are participating online is, you know, they, they go through the same process, they click the link, they fill it out. And then perhaps you can ask them, you know, type in amen or whatever, something like that when you're, um, when you're done, uh, so that everybody else can see that there's all these amens popping up. So it's kind of a neat way to, to have that be a part of the process and make sure you recruit some people to do it, to get it started so that nobody feels they have to be the first. It's always good to have a plan. <laughs> um, take that link and, and post it in the chat, paste it in zoom, Facebook live, however, um, however you can do it, uh, uh YouTube, you can put it in the uh, um, in the description, or uh, so. Uh, so definitely take advantage of your of your program so that it's part of the service. And at some point in time, when you're ready to do this, um, you you have somebody ready to to put the link up there and have people That's start filling idea. it up. So uh, um, so it's really a, if it, you you do this every year, it's just yeah. about it's a matter of of making this year uh, right taking advantage of everything that you're all the tools that we have. <laughs> one of the other, be able to one, of the other, yeah, one of the other things that is kind of handy to remember too, as you're looking at what's going on in your chat function, you know, whether it's Facebook, wh whatever kind of chat box you're looking at is that if you've got a lot of stuff going on in your chat box, um, it, it's sometimes worthwhile posting that link more than once, mm. you know, because it's going to scroll. Um, and it may get to the point where the link scrolls, you know, so mm -hmm. that no one can see it anymore. So if you get to the point where you've got a lot of stuff going on in your chat, posting the link again can't hurt. <laughs> okay. Great point. Good idea. Good suggestion. Yeah. And I'm just now getting around to noticing the chat here. So uh, thank you everybody <laughs> for, <laughs> for doing that. I was, I was going to say that, you know, for the, especially for some of the folks who, um, you know, who look like they're either on by phone or, or may not have full video capacity. It might be worthwhile, you know, talking about some of the folks did post in the chat what they're going to be, do, some of the special stuff they're going to be doing. Yeah, that's good. That's a good idea. Absolutely. Thank you. So, so, yeah, we have some, uh, um, some guest speakers coming in, uh, special guest speakers, um, testimonials, text and video uh, during the, the weekend as um we have a, a St. Mark's who's invited a youth member who has grown up in the church to share their impact. Um, she's now a freshman in college. Uh, so, uh, yeah, lots of uh, um, St. Bernard, uh, Bernard's planning on storytelling night by Zoom on November 1st to conclude our stewardship season. Uh, so, uh, yeah, thank you all for sharing. This is great. So... Um, We're moving to the next session. Section. Yeah. We have five minutes left. Maybe we just spend the next five minutes discussing. And, and if anyone has any questions about any of the previous slides. Yeah, I think that's that's probably a wise way to go. <laughs> but uh, yeah, thank you everybody. And and uh, yeah, anybody have any any particular any questions about or you know, as as you're starting to digest this, uh, of how it might work, uh, obviously there's the need to have somebody who is capable of doing this, but hopefully you've been doing this for the past uh, eight, nine months. Uh, so you, you've developed some technical capability on Facebook Live and, and uh, YouTube or however. Uh, so 
you know, any, any thoughts on how this might work? I had a question about, um, are there different or special strategies you have for young adults? Um, you know, especially those who have been part of the church but have recently moved out or on their own. Um, what would you suggest in terms of, you know, using some of these tools? What would work best for them? And especially if they're not on, you know, on at church all the time, you know, on every Sunday. How would you yeah. approach those folks? Yeah, and and you know that what this what this talks about is really a, a, about the the end of the program, and, and it and it skips over the obvious part of all the stuff that we are we are should be doing in between now, when the program launches and when we're having the final uh, in gathering, and absolutely posting things on um, on your social media channels is good, but also to take advantage of whatever. Um, uh, programs you might be using, whether it's text messaging or WhatsApp or, uh, um, or uh, um, Instagram or all the other things. So just post messages and, ca and really meet people wherever they are. Uh, so so we, we definitely recommend that the, the education process uh, take, take on, you know, a, a, a much, much more uh, of a, a, you know, a, a, a capture, capture people on various platforms. So, uh, I'm not, I'm not necessarily one to speak. I, I, I've given up on, on uh, a lot of that stuff, but I think there's still, the young, young people are absolutely doing that. Um, so. Uh, one of the other things that we, uh, that we did um, uh, over many years, um, well, I was working with our youth group at St. Matthew's in Pennington, was we had a couple of traditions um, that I think were really valuable to our, our, our uh, high school uh, youth group, and then as they went on to college, you know, became young adults. One of them was that we always um, we made candles for all of our graduates, and then whenever we would meet together, um, we would light candles, you know, for the graduates at at the end of the meeting, and we would remember them. And you know, we would basically each each current member of the youth group would pick up, you know, however many candles they needed to. And, you know, then from one central candle in the middle of the table, they would light these candles and they would have the name on the bottom of one of our graduates. And they would say, you know, um, I, you know, remember, we were remembering and we're praying for whomever that name was. And so, of course, all of our college graduate or our high school graduates knew that this was happening for them. Um, whenever we would do our meetings. So, you know, that I think that meant we've heard back that that meant a lot to them. The other one, which is a good way of maintaining connection, I think is twice a year, we would send them care packages. And our mm -hmm. current youth group would be in charge of putting together the care packages. They would decorate them, they would make cards with, you know, funny sayings or remembrances about them. And we would always do it right around exam time. And we would fill it with, you know, all kinds of candy and junk food and stuff like that, you know, and, and send them to our, um, to our young adults as a way of maintaining contact. And it was also a way for us to be able to communicate to them you know, again, what's our social media link? What's, you know, what are ways that they can stay connected? Um, so there's a couple, couple of ideas there too. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Care packages were wonderful. We've done that at St. Augustine's as well. Yeah. And really greatly appreciated by those who were in college. We always heard whenever they, the, the neat part about it is, you know, we would send out the care packages. So for this semester, we'd usually send them out like right before Thanksgiving because a lot of the colleges are already getting ready for final exams at that point in time. So we would do that. Um, and then we would, um, you know, then when they would come home, you know, over the Christmas break, one of my favorite services always was the Christmas Eve service because I'd always see you know, the kids, they, they'd all come back, you know, and we always right. heard, oh, I love the care package. Thank you mm -hmm. so much. And yeah, they really did mean a lot to them. That's nice. Well, well, thank you, everybody. We definitely want to be respectful of your time. And uh, we have an opportunity to, uh, to end on time here. So uh, um, I hope everybody uh, had uh, got a lot out of this. And, and thank you so much for 
uh, putting everything in the chat, we'll absolutely download this uh, transcript so that we can have it. <laughs> um, so uh, um, if there's nothing else, uh, perhaps uh, uh, Father Dave, would you like to close us out? Yes, indeed, very much. Thank you, and echoing what uh, Eric just said, thanks to everyone for uh, joining us tonight, especially to the good folks from St. Augustine's in Asbury Park. Wonderful presentation. Thank you. Uh, the Lord be with you. Be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the time we have spent together this evening, and for our partnership in advancing the ministry of stewardship in the Diocese of New Jersey. Give us grace to continue this urgently important work. Give us favor with the people we are called to serve and give us joy in our life together. Finally, we thank you for our Bishop's vision to identify this coming Sunday as Stewardship Sunday throughout the Diocese of New Jersey. We pray your blessing upon our plans for this weekend as we lift up the ministry of stewardship. All these things we ask in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. 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 Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. <laughs>